What is the fourth derivative of f of x shown below at x equals 0? f of x equals 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. So let me show you the derivatives. So this is the first derivative, and this is the second, third, and fourth derivative. So to find the fourth derivative as here in the question, we're going to solve the first, second, third, then fourth. So let me write the formula, which is f of x equals 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. So as we can see here in the formula, we have a function inside a larger function. So that means we're going to use chain rule. So what does chain rule says? Derivative of outside function leaving inside function alone. So we have the derivative outside function and leaving the function inside alone, then times the derivative of inside function. So we have here a power. So if we have here a power, we're going to use the power rule. So what does the power rule says? For example, here, I have 2x to the power of 3. So 3 divided by 2 as the power rule, it will be 6, then 3 minus 1 equals 2. So we're going to do 3 times 2, then we're going to minus it by 1. So we'll do the same here. So we here we have to power of 4, so I'm going to put it here, then minus 1. So the first derivative equals. So I moved the 4 here. Then, as we said, we're going to leave inside function as it is as the chain rule. So I'm going to leave inside function as it is. And then 4 minus 1 equals 3. Then the derivative inside. So let's derivative inside. So 2x plus 1. So when we see x without any power, it means the number inside uh, front of the x is the derivative. How is that? So if x don't have a power, mean to the power of 1. So 1 times 2 equals 2 then 1 minus 1 is 0, and x to the power 0 is 1. So we don't need to write it. And then here, 1 without any x, it means constant number. So any constant number, and the, the derivative of it will be 0. So here we have the derivative is 2. So now we need to simplify. So to, to simplify, we're going to do 2 times 4 equals 8. Then here I have nothing to divide with it, so I'm going to leave it as it is. So now I find the first derivative. Let me find the second derivative. So the second derivative equals, we're going to do the same way. So here the power, so 3 times 8 equals 24. And then as the chain rule, we're going to leave the number here, minus 1, the number inside as it is, then the times the derivative inside. So going to put the number inside as it is. then 3 minus 1 equals 2 and then the derivative inside as we solved it before it's 2 and then again we're going to simplify so 2 times 24 equals 48 and then i'm going to leave the number here as it is find the first derivative and we find the second derivative and this was the answer for the second derivative as we solved it and now we're going to find the third then the fourth derivative so let me write the third derivative 
equal. So we're going to use the chain rule again. So let me remind you of the chain rule again. So derivative of outside, which is this one, function leaving inside function as it is, then times the derivative inside. So the derivative outside, this one. So we have power. So I'm going to use the power rule. So 2 times 48 and here minus 1 as the power rule so for uh, 2 times 48 equals 96 then the number here as it is as the chain rule so i'm going to leave the function inside as it is so 2x plus 1 then 2 minus 1 equals 1 then the derivative inside so as i said here we have x if x without any power mean the number directly in front of x and here we have x without uh, we have number without x which mean constant number so it's zero so here too and now i'm going to simplify so 2 times 96 equals 100 92 then here i'm going to leave it as it is 2x plus 1 to the power of 1 because i have nothing to divide to multiply it with and now we find the third and now we're going to go to the fourth derivative so the fourth derivative equals we're going to do the same way so 1 times 190 2 equals 192 and then here minus 1 so I'm going to do leave the function as it is as I set up for the chain rule and then 1 minus 1 equals 0 then the derivative inside which I which we found up is 2 and now let's solve it so i'm going to keep 196 as it is you could multiply it now or you could multiply it later but i'm going to multiply it later so here we have 2x plus 1 so let me tell you about something so here if we have for example 5 to the power of 0 it's directly 1 anything with the power of 0 for example 1 to the power of 0 it's always 1 so here we have 2x plus 1 so if it's power to the 0 it's going to be directly 1 so anything with the power of 0 means 1 the derivative will be 1 and then I'm going to leave 2 as it is and then equals I'm going to put 192 as it is so 2 times 1 equals 2 then 192 times 2 equals 384 so the fourth derivative equals 384 Diagram below is just circle O with the radii OA and OB. The measure of angle AOB is 120 degrees and the length of the radius is 6 cm. Which expression represents the length of the arc AB in centimeters? So we can see here we have a curve. So the curve here is known as the arc length, the arc of AB. And now what we need to do is to use the formula of the arc length. So what does the formula says? S equals. So what does S mean? S is the arc length. It's the distance between point, point A and point B around the edge of the circle. So time equals theta. So theta is the central angle in radians times R, which is the distance between O and B, as we can see here. So now what we need to do is to convert theta from degrees to radians. To do that, we will multiply it by pi divided by 180. So we will divide it by pi over 180. So it will be 
theta equals 120 degrees times pi over 180 so it will be we have here 120 times by over 180 so here we can cancel the zeros so I, I have to cancel here 0 and here 0 so if we cancel the zeros it will be 12 over 18 and here we have pi so 12 by over 18 so 12 here is also known as 6 times 2 and the 18 is also known as 6 times 3 so 6 times 2 equals 12 and I'm gonna leave the by here and then over 6 times 3 which is 18 and now we can cancel the 6 as we can see here we have 6 up and 6 down so theta I'm gonna write it up theta equals 2 by as we can see here 2 by left up over what's left down is only 3 so 2 by over 3 now we will find the arc length so I'm gonna write it here so as I said the arc length formula is s so s is the arc length equals theta times r so here we find theta which is 2 by over 3 so 2 by over 3 times r which is the point between a and b as i said so it's 6 And now we will multiply 6 by 2, which will give us 12. And then I'm going to keep the pi as it is. So as here, I multiply it by 2. And here we have over. So the 3 here, it will be over 1 because I multiply it here. So it's going to be 1 over 3. 12 pi so which answer is it it's this one suppose that for a certain city in the uae in any given year the probability of a sandstorm is 0 0.15 and the probability of rain is 0 0.08 and the probability of both a sandstorm and rain is 0 0.02 what is the probability of rain given that a sandstorm hits so we have here the sandstorm is 0 0.15 so I'm gonna call it a and then the rain the probability of the rain is 0 0.08 so I'm gonna call it B and then the probability of both is a and b so to find the probability i need to use the conditional probability formula so the formula says probability b given a equals probability a and b 
over probability of A. So we just need to replace the numbers here in the formula. So as we, we solved here, so we can see that 0 0.15 is A and 0 0.08 is B and A and B is 0 0.02. So here we need the probability of A and B. So the probability of A and B is 0 0.02. So 0 0.02 and the probability of A is 0 0.15. So let's check which answer is it. So it's going to be this one. 